welcome back. And here we are, first part of standard rules. Where we're gonna start off with a tutorial on how to play standard rules. Which is a whole different world. It's harder than easy rules, so I'll, say, I'll tell you that. So I was gonna say the same thing here. First use action in figure four game. Get rich quick. Ramp your network to target amount. Won't we prevent that victory? And our good friends tell us I'm gonna be back again. Now, practice board, we have 8,000 of the gold. Which, oh uh, yeah, might as well mention, yeah, the target amounts for standard rules is, is increased. So yeah, again, first 8,000 in this case wins, single player bankrupt, the game ends. Yeah, player with the highest net worth remains the game's third winner. So we already know this. So now, it's going to get show you sets. Down over here. Ready cash, and then the net worth. So now I'm gonna remind us to click the goal. In order to get a promotion bonus, you just get all four suits. Now the bonus here starts at 900 about and gets a bigger chance to receive it. You gotta pick them up and landing on passing them. Now, time for me to explain things. So the first thing you can see is compared to the easy tutorial, you see this map is entirely different. This mode is pretty much show you the taste of that standard rules, the maps are mostly are entirely different than the easy counterpart. Except easy rule I mean except standard there are two to three maps that are exactly the same in standard rules. But a bit altered. So your options are still roll, view board. And then manage shops and then utter is the same thing. Now the new thing is the thing called cell stocks. Now I won't explain more about more about this menu yet until a bit later. For now, as you can see, there's a thing called District A, District B, and District C. So what are these districts supposed to make? Basically, instead of getting rolls of shops, you're supposed to get shops in the same district to like make them bigger and invest more. So you can see like these shops over here are all covered in the red border. They all are District A shops, which you see consists of six shops. Well, over here is District B, which has four of them. And lastly is District C over here. Now, another thing that we noticed, there are some, you notice this district here are all connected together, while this district is separated by a rolling square. And some of these shops here are, are are actually separated from the suit squares. So the thing about the districts is they don't have to be touching to be like in a row. As long as they're bought in the same color border, your shops will increase prices and how much cash you can invest in. And we're gonna start off by buying off the shop right here. So now again, I'm gonna tell you, stop your shops here is the key. And then this is how much you pay. Well, how much you must pay to buy it, and then how much money you get from players. And then the, the whole part where your ready cash will take a hit, but not your net worth. And then, pretty much... Oh, yeah, now here it is, the actual part about districts. So yeah, you see, it's the shade of the board where each shop square of the board tells you what the district it belongs to. So you manage to acquire more and more shops in the district until you have total domination there. And oh yeah, and then that's the term you use when you have all shops in the same area, just total domination. If your shops will boom, you'll be re you'll really be in the money. It's a short way to bring you closer to victory. And indeed it is. We'll see once we can take over. So our first shop. So now it tells him about his first shop in the district A as well. And here it tells him the claim that one day is going to be dominated by him. So I'm going to go up here and get it. 
get this first shot in his district A2. He's gonna be slime ploppity now. So it's gonna be my turn. I'm gonna get my first shot in district B. I won't explain about sell stock and buying stock until after I level up. And that's when it's the best time to explain it. Yeah, I'm still gonna turn this to a level shop, even though that's gonna be the opposite. Now here's gonna be Slime's first property into District B as well. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pay Slime. But here is where you can buy or play a shop without the consent. You just know the force buyout. But the thing is, if you don't have the ready cash or stock base is set, you can't force to do anything. So now, yeah, there's another little feature. So it's not only you have ready cash, you have stock value too. The thing about stocks is you buy stocks with your ready cash. And so those count towards your total set. But I'm not gonna go buy out stock for two out of four though. So I'm gonna say no. So I was gonna take a little break. And do some spring cleaning, he says. Show here you can choose once again learning your own shop. You can choose to pay gold, expand it, investing. Then you the more you invest, the bigger they become. And again, there is an investment cap limit or cap, you know, maximum capital. But the thing about standard is, it's not most of the time it's not best you invest on the spot. Why? Because when you choose to invest in the shop. At the very bottom, you can see this thing called stock price. So you see that the stock price will go up to 10. That's the little number in the top two near our counters up there. But no one has stock yet, so... The thing about stock prices is when you rise the stock, raise the stock price up, you get money accordingly to how much you have stock in the area. But since no one has stock, no one's gonna earn anything. Like, I'll demonstrate by doing this. I mean, so I get the investment and such. Now I'm gonna say, look, District B stock price rise. It goes from nine gold to ten gold. But you see, no one has stock here, so no one earn gold. So the one thing about standard is this is a bad idea mostly. If you never, one thing in standard is you never want to invest in your own shop until you have stock in the area. Intel is gonna get rid of all the troublemakers in that area. I mean, prices rise accordingly, but stock price, you don't earn any of your stocks if you have nothing. Now, here's Slime gonna pay me. So, he landed on it, and the goods are 92. Green is gonna bully Slime here and take some money. And now, here's what happens when you have. Another shop in the same area. So it's gonna tell you with each additional shop you acquire in that in a district, every shop you own there will expand. So you see the prices go up, of course, so does the capital. You can invest in each shop, so it's a real winner. The more you get, the greater the effect. And then yeah, you don't and pretty much you do not want to miss your chance to get more shops in the same area. And when you buy a second shop or more, it will tell you, see, look, that's your second shop in the district, in District A. So, you see, both of these prices, shops are going to rise. I'm 
Pay me again. And here I'm gonna land the bank. This is where we get, I can talk about the stock buying and such. So here, he dropped in at the bank so you can buy stocks in the district of your choice. Now you don't now you do not have to land on the bank to buy stocks. As long as you run into the bank, you can pet you can buy stocks. And you buy stocks, the stock price goes up, and ka ching you make money. This is the golden rule of money making in the standard rule. Which by the way is like the most complicated that makes this mode the most complicated, by the way. So spend on stocks and reap the rewards. So here. Click yes. And I was gonna say when it comes to buying stocks. Make sure you know the stock price and check out all the shops in the district. So you see, it shows the stock price. Pretty much, it's how much gold it costs for one piece of stock. So in District A, it costs one stock equals eleven gold. And then at the bottom, it shows all the shops that are in the area. This shows all the shops that are unowned and the shops that are owned by players. So you see how two of them are owned by me. I own shops number four and six. Toe owns five, number five, and Slime owns shop number one. And then the other, then shops two and four are blank. So yeah, like the first rule is you must see which shops are owned by people and what's not owned, and also the value, the price, and the capital. And now the next rule is a district stock price increases as it, its aggregate shop value increases. So yeah, the top number. Pretty much, these determine what the stock values to begin with. So, like, if there were like a district that had like super cheap value shops, then the stock price will be cheap. But if some of them have like decent, average, good values, then the stock price will cost a bit more. But the stock price also goes up when you expand on shops too. So that's also of course pretty much correlation effect. And now I'm going to tell you how can you tell how much shops are likely to expand. It's to keep an eye on each shop's maximum possible capital investment. Pretty much, if you see shops that have a lot of capital left remaining, pretty much you're able to expand a lot. Now, if you see, now <laughs> the same case goes with shops that have little max capital, you won't be able to expand much more. So pretty much you gotta pay attention to the max capital to determine which stock value will rise really fast or which will rise quickly. And now here's the next thing that I'm gonna tell you to consider too. That's where <laughs> this is the major part, where if you own any shops or someone else. So here is if you were to buy a lot of stocks in the area you have. The stock price will rise as you invest in your shops. You know, simple as that. So basically, like, if you own an area and you buy stocks and invest, well, you're going to boost the stock price really easily, right? I mean, yeah, pretty obvious. And here, yeah, you make gold hand over fist. And yes, just follow this golden rule and you'll rule the gold. So yeah, now they're going to leave it up to you to buy it. So you see, for my first, the first area, I have two out of six. This district B, I already invested in the shop, so I can't even expand anymore. Only my Toad and Slime can. And lastly, district C is only owned by Toad, so like, I don't have no point of buying stock here. Now there is another tact. There is a tactic in this game, though. Other than the one where you buy stocks in your own area. There's a tactic where if you buy stocks in an opponent's area that someone owns, it's a thing called freeloading or piggybacking or mooching. Basically, it's where you get stock, you buy stocks in there, and then you watch them invest, and they help you and themselves get money. But the, the rule is, you have to note, that opponent is going to make his or her shops expensive, not yours, because you're not the owner of the shops. You'll get to see freeloading in the future, for sure. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and follow the golden rule, which is buy stocks in the area I own the most. So that's gonna be District A. Now, as you can see, the purchase amount is 11 gold for every stock I own. 
So you see 11, 22, 3, such. Now, one thing I hate that didn't mention is how much you should buy. Also, the middle is ready cash, which is how much you're going to lose when you buy a certain amount of stock. And then stock price is at the bottom. Why? Fun fact. Whenever you buy at least 10 stock in one area, the stock price will rise. Mostly of the time. Most of the time. Sometimes it may or may not. Mostly it will rise. But, no, but again, only when you buy at least 10 or more. If you buy 9 or less, the stock price will never increase, as you can see. But by doing 10 or more, see, the stock price will like always go up. Now, next thing is how much should one buy stocks? I say you should follow this rule. You should always buy as many as you can. Because when the stock price rises, you earn the money for how much stock you have. And then you see in this case, I can buy up to 99 stocks, which the thing about it is 99 stocks is the max amount you can buy. You can never buy 100. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no, no, you cannot buy 100 or more stock. You can only buy 99. That's the limit. That's if you can afford it, which is the text up here. Like, since I can afford it, it will tell me I can buy 99 stocks. And then again, follow my going rule, I will buy 99 stocks. And then the game's gonna say, you buy this many stocks in district, whatever. Now I'm gonna end my turn. Now you see the stock price rise. Now you see the district A stock price rise because I bought at least 10 stock or more. Also, as you can see, I got plus 99 in gold because I got, well, I have 99 stocks. So, I get the money according to it. Whereas Toad and Slime don't, because they don't have stocks in my in this District A area. So now, once Slime levels up and buy his stocks, I will show, I'll explain more about selling stocks. See, so, yeah, this digital stock price are going to really go in the escalate. Come on, certain. So now here, he feels like he's gonna. So like, pretty much here, he's gonna buy twenty stock in District B, and that's like, like wow, that's how you make Goku stocks. <laughs> Fantabulous. So pretty much, you see, Slime is so happy. So you see, he bought 20 stock here, so that way he feels like he's gonna invest in his job to boost it. Now, man, his job is, is the same. Now, here, sell stocks. So, sell stocks. You can only sell the stock that you own. That's the first thing. Like, you cannot sell stocks from anyone else's. That's your only users. Now, for selling stocks, you can sell as many as you want to, if you have that much. So like, if I wanted to, I could sell all 99 of my stock and put it back in ready cash. Nope, this is a bad idea. You, in standard, you want your money to be in stocks, not ready cash. That's the first rule about buying stocks. You want to keep it as stocks. You never want to keep it as ready cash, because then you're not going anywhere anytime soon. But explaining more about selling stocks, as you can see, each sale it tells you to show you the sale amount. So like each stock is worth twelve. So I get twelve, twenty-four, thirty-six, and so on. Also, it shows you how much rate cash I gain, and now stock price is affected too. How is it affected? Whenever you sell ten, the stock price will go down most of the time. So it's pretty much kind of like it's pretty much it's the opposite of buying. Like you saw how as I explained, when you buy ten stock or more, it goes up. By it goes up, but when you sell ten or more, it will, the stock price will go down. Simple as that. So if you ever like, let's say you did. So let's say you need to, you want some ready cash because you're almost near negative. Well, you always sell nine. As you see, if I sell nine. 
the stock price will stay the same. But if I were to sell 10 or more, I'm going to have to be, I'm going to have to be aware the stock price will go down. Now I'm going to show what happened now. It is pretty self-explanatory that when the stock price goes down, the amount of stock you own in that area will go down with you. So I mean, I'm going to show it off anyway though. So here, I'm going to just go ahead and sell 10 more. And then roll. Here I'm gonna get a three out of six over here though. Now here, since I sold ten, this is gonna happen. So you see district A stock price fall because I sold ten. And also since I had a nice stock here that while it crashed down, I'm gonna lose a nine gold. So to sum it up. When you get to buy stocks, buy 10 or more, stock price goes up. When you have to sell stock, selling 10 or more goes down. The amount of stock you have will go up and down according to the rise and fall. Now, I should explain what was that dividend thing, but we'll get to see it later. I'm actually going to see it here too. So yeah, dividend payoff from Digital B stocks. What's dividends? Basically, it's kind of like a boon effect in the district. Basically, if you have stocks in the area, anyone that makes a payment, you will get a commission from it. Now, the rule about it is, if you own, if you're the only player that owns stocks in the area, if you own at least five or more stock, you will get the 20% commission in full. But if someone else owns stock with you, it will be split between you and the other players, player or players that has the stock in the area. Again, this is only a 20% commission, so it's like a minor bonus money that's like pretty much evenly distributed in slices. You will see it a lot more often in the main game, but it's out there. And then here is my own shot. I can choose the best. Now here comes, now here comes the part where this is how one should invest in standard. Now that I have like, now that I have stock in my, um, District A, this is the best time to do so. I mean, I'm going to demonstrate by here. So if I do a 999 investment here, the stock price will go up by seven. Let's go ahead and do that. And now look what happens. So you see District A stock price rise, 11 to 18, and look, I earned 623 gold. So now, what I just did was a thing called insider trading, I think. Basically, it's just you invest in your own area with stock. That's basically, that's all it is, as you just get money. And pretty much, it puts you closer to the goal. And also, your shops are more a bit more expensive. So it's like you use ready cash to give yourself more money and expensive shops. Okay, yeah, it's so I make it sound complicated, don't I? But it's actually very it's very straightforward. It's get stock, if get shops, buy stock in that that same area, invest, and make money. Those are the steps for standard. So it's not like easy where you're supposed to invest in your own shop and then hope people land on it and then you just get money for it. This one pretty much adds another step where you get money for stocks. Now next is what happens if you go in a negative? So here it'll tell you you need to sell a shop or some stocks. I'm gonna say this here. Never sell a shop when you have stocks you can sell. Like never because if you sell a shop that will go up to auction, and you'll lose money too. And your opponents can win the auction, and you will not get any money. So it's safer, and this is 100% recommended you do this. You sell stocks. So we're back on this page. Now, the thing about selling stock is, you have to sell stock until you're positive. 
I mean, luckily the game will automatically show you how much you need to sell. So you see, I need to sell seven to be in the positive. Because if I sell six, I'll still be in the red. Which, again, that's the point is we're trying to get out of the red, not in the red. Not stay in the red. And now, another addition thing is, if you ever need to sell seven, if you ever need to sell, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight stock, I would recommend you sell nine. Why? Because it gives you a bit more ready cash on the hand. So you won't be selling constantly. But in standard, you're, you're most likely going to, so it's going to happen. But remember, but the number one thing you should not do is if you have the cha if you have the ability to sell less than ten stock, then sell less than ten stock. Because remember, if you sell ten or more like this, you see the stock price will fall, and again you lose money unless you decide to sell all your stock. But I would not recommend doing that most of the time. Like there's there's a rare occasion where you should sell your stock, but. Not at this point. And we'll we'll see it mostly in the future games. So for now, we're going to sell nine stock because again, it stays away from the crash of making the stock price fall. And then two, it gives me more than eight just eight gold in money. So let's see, I sell nine stocks, and you see look. I don't lose money from the um, stock crash. You always you want to avoid stock crashing the stock. Now, why do you want to avoid crashing the stock? Because there's actually an additional effect when you crash stock. Whenever the stock price falls constantly, it makes the stock worthless. And then when you invest and expand. The stock price will be garbage. But yes, it will be actual garbage. As in, you won't even earn as much money as you would if the stock wasn't crashed. So, and then, same case goes when you buy stock. Like, if someone were to keep buying 10 stock over and over and over and rise the stock price, it actually will make investment stock price rise increase tenfold. Like, not literally tenfold, but like, much better and faster than it would if someone were to not constantly raise the stock price. So again, to sum it up, when someone keeps buying, when someone keeps boosting the stock price up by investing or by um, buying stock, the stock price rise, the, the trend will go up higher. But if someone were to keep selling 10 and keep lowering the stock value, the trend will go lower and you wouldn't earn as much. Yeah, again, yeah, I'm saying it's such a mouthful and it sounds confusing. But I'm telling you, it's actually, again, once you like play through it, it actually gets kind of super straightforward. Now here, I'm going to give it 2 out of 4 in B. And now again, I'm not going to sell a shop, I'm going to sell stocks. Now... There are times though, if you, now there are times when you may have to sell 10 or more, like this. So you have to sell 11 and lose the stock value. Again, I'm not going to sell a shop because of the stock crash. So I'm going to say this, do not be afraid to crash the stock value sometimes. Sometimes you have to because you wanted to buy the shop. Now with this in mind, you can choose, I say you can always choose to buy the minimal if it's like, sell the minimal if it's 10 or more. Or, if you want to play it safe, you can always sell a bit more. Like in this case, I could sell 20 and give myself like 176 in ready cash. But instead, I'm going to save myself to... I'm going to sell down to 24 and put myself to 248 ready cash. Why this odd number? Because you see that shot number 2 is still blank. I feel like I'm going to land on it. So I want to make sure I have money to buy it. I mean, I see I'm gonna lose stock price, but you see, if I can buy the shop without going to the negative, it's gonna help me not sell more stock. So it's kind of like one of those preemptively selling stock to save money. 
Now Toad here is actually gonna pain me at this shop down here. I'm intimidated by the thought of person's dog. It seems like a grown, it's such a grown thing to do. Nah, <laughs> facts. So now here, Toad's gonna choose to pay four, buy 48 in my in District A, in my three out of six. And also, yeah, he's gonna blame his own self for stopping here. And oh, I skipped this compliment over the main money. Whoops. But now, now I'm gonna explain what Toad's motive. Also, why did I say my three out of six? So I have a habit of saying whenever someone I say whenever someone has like a two out of something or more in the area, I always say that area is like owned by them. So like in this case, I claim that this district A is owned by me because you can see I have half of the shops, while Toad and Slime only have one, basically. And now, I'm going to explain about Toad's motive. So now Toad, he's going to choose to pay and buy in this area. Now it does look silly because, you know, it's owned by my shops. But this is kind of what freeloading looks like. It's basically, you buy stock in other people's own areas just so you can get money from them when they invest. Yes, it's pretty much free, again, freeloading, mooching, piggybacking. It's a vital tactic in standard. It can be annoying, I will say, but again, there's nothing you can really do except, like, well, you could always sell the stock and not invest, but nah, I still will keep going. Because again, in the future, you will see a lot of freeloaders, and you have to actually deal with it. But also, the thing about Toad, too, is that Toad did choose this area because... This is his greatest amount of capital he can invest in. You see like 160 compared to his 135 and his 120. So it's kind of like a double double game he's doing. So now here I get to invest again. Which if I want to. And now comes my next thing. When you should invest with stock. Now usually... I would say investing with 56 stock is pretty meh, as in it's it's decent because you get money, but you don't really earn money with this amount of stock. I would say you I recommend you should have at least have 90 stock or more to invest. So I'm gonna say no and wait till I buy more stock. Because, if you can tell by now, the more stock you own in an area, the more money you'll gain when you expand your shops. If you can keep that rule in mind too, it's going to pretty much help you in a while as it'll just pretty much give you more money. More money. So, like here. So, let's see, here, I can buy 99 more stock. Go ahead and do that. And here, I'm gonna earn 155. So now, you see, I have over 100. This is where I recommend you start investing. Because that way, you can actually at least earn a lot more money. And I hear Toe feels like he should invest while he can. Then he can go ahead and do so. And he will tell you next time how much I want to pay dearly. Okay. He's starting me to pay him. So now Toe's gonna help out by using the stock value. Also, he's gonna sell some stock too. Slime's not going to invest yet. So yeah, so you see, total boost of the stock value and everything. But again, that's because he wanted to freeload, and also that's because he wanted to defend my shop, defend the shop from me. Because you know, again, same. So 
a thing I call it too is whenever you own less shops than the person that owns the most, I call it defending your shop because basically the one that owns more shops will target the other shops to take over the area. Again, you won't, again the objective is to dominate the district. But here I'm gonna get my fourth shop in District A. And get some like pricey, more pricey shops, and you know I can invest more. I was gonna sell nine. Yeah, here I get to the best. We're gonna go ahead and choose to do so in front of Slime Space. Now here, watch how much money I get this time. So you see, this time I earned 1240 for gold for the plus 80 stock rise because I had 155 stocks. Whereas Toad, he only got 240 because of 30 stock. Now you can see how this, see how this thing, how much money you earn compared to how much stock you have. You see how it's only 30, you only got 240, but for me, with 155, I got 1,000 more. Now I do sign up to have to sell more than 10 stock here. But the main point I'm trying to show is that some the, the main point I'm trying to show is that it's best you invest with at least 90 stock or greater. Sometimes stockpiling helps you earn a lot more money faster. But sometimes having 90 stock is pretty cool too. Here yeah, because you're able to invest quickly and such, and then you can hurt some people. Anyway, here's Slime's turn. He's gonna actually avoid the shop. He's not going to invest. Here we get to invest again. Go ahead and do so. Now, another thing about investing is you can always adjust how much you want to invest in case you don't want to lose too much money. Well, in case you don't want to sell too much stock. So, like, in case you didn't want to sell too much stock like I just did here, you can always invest less so that way you can keep ready cash. Or if you go in the negative a bit, you can like just sell nine and stay away from the sell ten. Now, one thing is, I usually don't, I usually do not restrict myself on investing them like safely. So I usually just go all in with nine nine nines or the max investment because I say it's just better you just instantly raise the stock price up and also make shops make shops go as max as they can be. Or, in this case, make them more expensive for your competition to, to pay you, in case they land on them. But again, i say as long as you have at least 90 stock or above, I just recommend you just keep investing. And it's how it here is going to pay. It's going to pay me dearly. Right here, he's actually gonna lose all his stocks, so now he has to start selling shops. As remember, if you ever go into negative and you have stocks, sell your stock first. But if the thing is though, but if you cannot, but if you do hit negative and you lose all your stocks, just remember you have to sell shops then. If you're still in the negative. Also, Toast said something else too. 
Which I was not expecting. And now Slime's gonna pay me too. She's gonna choose the bike. She's actually gonna choose the free load me by buying 50. Here's a two out of four. So I'm gonna level up here. I wonder which you got the most potential. Well, you'd be a fool if you didn't choose this or gay. So you can go ahead and preload me again in District A. You can see the stock price is just gonna rise and give us more money. Making pricey shops is also a cool idea, cool too, when people pay you. Because one thing is, when people pay you, that means you can buy more stock and invest more. Which I forgot to mention, which I forgot to mention that for this whole game. So, like, one thing is, never, do, not, do not hesitate to expand your shop when you have at least money stock or more. That way, people can pay you, and then you can buy even more stock somewhere else, or in your area, over and over. Now, science has really a compliment on my stock. Now here, I'm actually going to go ahead and buy out Toad. Now, also, the main thing I mentioned is, how does one know you have? How do you know your ready cash total? To to some of your total sets, you have to add your stock number and your ready cash amount. What's well, your stock amount and your ready cash amount? Like so, since I have four thousand eight hundred seventy nine stocks and then twelve sixteen ready cash, this means I'm at like six thousand in ready cash. Like I wouldn't usually I don't calculate it like accurately, but. The thing is, that's pretty much how it's calculated. If you're ready to have it. Just remember, you can. It's so. Just remember this. In standard, it is okay to go negative as long as you have stocks, like so. So you see, like I'm at like negative two, twenty three eighty four. But again, I have stocks, so all is not lost. I mean, it's gonna hurt because I'm gonna have to sell a lot of stock here. But again, you can always buy back stock when you level up or when you make money from people. So 
Now we're going to find 31. It's going to boost District B shops by 10%. Here I'm gonna reach the banks of one game. And so yeah, that's standard tutorial. So now I'm gonna give one recap. So like basically what to do. So your objective is get all suits, once again, get shops in the same district color border to dominate. Level up. Going back to the bank all suits, buy stocks, buy as many as you can each time you have the chance to do so. And then invest when you have at least 90 stock or more in the, in the area of you, in your own area. And then as long as you follow those rules, you are pretty pretty much you are you are pretty much somewhat set to do standard. I mean, there are some other things such as freeloading, which is basically buy stock in someone else's area that's not that where the opponents own more of the most of the shops there, and not you. But again, we'll see that in the future. We'll see that in the future games for sure. I mean, technically, we saw in this game because to that's what Totem Slime did. They bought, you know, they bought stock in District A, even though I have four of the shops there. Pretty much, they were mooching off of me, off of my success for a bit. And then, literally, the mission, the rule about mission standard is selling. You can sell stock when you're in the negative. Never choose to sell a shop when you're in the negative. Always sell stock first. And then, don't be afraid when you have to sell 10 or more. And don't be afraid of the crash. Again, it's just going to happen, like a lot, because, <laughs> again, buying stock and buying shops is so much of a mix for the game. And then investing is the same case too. You'll, you'll put yourself in the negative a lot often when you want to invest. As you'll see, yeah, you'll see me go in the negative a lot often. And the AIs too. Like, basically in standard, you will not, you will have the, you'll get into the habit of selling your stock. As long as you follow the rules to buy, I'll follow my rules. Well, the steps I just mentioned. So now, that pretty much summed up in a way. So here's me first, tone second, slime third. And here's our graph. You just get that high spike to the top, and then except so I bought out Toad. So I own 4,000 sales. And Toad and Slime pay over 1,000. And yeah, final salaries. Which, yeah, no one made it halfway except for me. Well, Toad didn't even make it halfway, he got second. He bottom out. So now here, I could have graduated from Bruce on the second board. And they said, try tour mode. Which will indeed be much harder. And now, our advice, our tip is going to be the force bio fees, which is the thing is you just get three fifths. Of the, you get three fifths of the value going into your purse slash wallet when someone buys you out. You never get the full times five value because it's too. It'll give you too much money in for an advantage. So yeah, now our next thing to do is tour, which I'm going to do the same thing again. Just do Dragon Quest Super Mario cycle. And then same rules apply. If, if I clear the map, I keep going forward. If I don't clear the map, I'll re I'll retry it, and, then, and so on. And then for any map I do not get, per I do not clear it first. Then that's optional. When first is optional, and I do not get first. I'll come back to it after I complete the optional easy rule maps. I got second and third on. So yeah, same rules, tour rules apply. The only difference though is that this time around we're gonna have different maps. 
like Sir Chodane here. Observatory is actually the same except for the oh. island. Man, yeah, pretty much gonna browse through it. As you can see, all these maps are like different mostly. Or they're like expanding, like Robin Hood Ruins here. It looks the same, but it actually has more squares. And then in addition to the map, the target amounts increase too, as I mentioned. You can see instead of going for like 10,000, you see they're like, oh, they're actually over 10,000. So yeah, they're even higher and longer because of the whole stock and district rules. Because again, yeah, standard is the harder version of this game and even longer. But again, it quite has its own challenge level due to the whole concept where you buy stocks and invest and get right raise the stock price. Pretty much making money through stocks, which you can never do in easy rules because easy rules are supposed to be simple, straight, and forward. This game puts a whole twist into it. Which again, you will be able, you'll see me do all sorts of tricks and such in this in standard as I go through this. So for next time, we're gonna do Castle Trode on standard against Slime, Platy, Punk, and Princessa. Which speaking of opponents, yeah, all the opponents are the same. If you notice, yeah, no opponents are shuffled around. They're all the same AIs from last time. The only difference, though, is just, again, different map, different rules, and longer goals. And with that, yeah, this is going to be it for this whole tutorial part. Yeah, next time, things will be much more clear and straightforward as I just do Trodane and the rest of the maps. See ya.